I'm surprised Donald Tusk came out Scar. Is he really big? I was gonna ask that. Oh, okay. <laughs> why is he like, why you made him like so, uh, like, I don't know, he was like comedy, but he was not. Yeah, yeah, over the top. <laughs> um, I personally come, like, as an audience member, I always love films that you can kind of laugh at. Like, I love watching, like, cheesy sort of movies, you know, especially from the 80s. I think, like, 80s villains are the best, like, like Johnny from Karate Kid or, like, the guys from, like, Revenge of the Nerds or something. And at the time, it's one thing, but if you watch it now, like, their, their performances, even though they're the villains, are hysterical. Oh, that yeah, is real. You know about that, or did we talk about that? No, no, I, I know about the incident. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, we we tried to make a suburban epic, like, <laughs> like, uh, so I wanted a big action battle and uh, trying to get great pranks, you know, that had happened in Bucks County, and they really do do that crossing every year, every Christmas, they do that crossing across the Delaware. And uh, one year, a bunch of high school students, I think it was like the early '80s, I guess, they they dressed up as the British and they ambushed the reenactors. <laughs> And they spent so much attention to detail on like the co period costumes and everything that people thought it was uh, real as part of the reenactment, and then got really into it. Could you explain if I'm connecting this correctly? Uh, you told that prank was so vague. Um, oh, the pranks, the logic of the pranks. <laughs> Operation Sorbet was the time capsule. Oh. Yeah. Build, digging up the time capsule and filling it with pornography, which is a weird, obscure thing, but I actually knew a guy that attempted to do that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how about Tanner? Anybody have any questions about? Yeah. Um, like, why is he throwing up? Why was he throwing up on the roof? Because of the poison. You guys got that? That's great. Yeah. Well, in, um, in the story. <laughs> Tanner was never a scripted character. He was the guy I went to high school with. It was sort of like an alcoholic or whatever, but he, yeah, he came out and uh, he helped uh, build the tree, the tree house. He was gonna help do that. And then we were gonna shoot the scene on the Delaware where he like dances and they chase after him. But that wasn't scripted either. Like we were supposed to have like Canadian geese. They would chase the geese like dogs. And, uh, but we couldn't get clearance from like PETA to use geese. So I was like, I don't know, Billy, you want to be in a movie? And so on the day, he got out there and he did the thing, and everyone on the crew like loved him because he'd been hanging out every day. So when the time capsule scene came around, which is a very different scene, it was actually one of my student films at FSU, completely different scene. Um, and it's on, it's on the DVD. Uh, but we realized, you know, because we were shooting 35, the amount of time it took the light, there was no way we'd be able to shoot that scene. So we're like, we got to do something else. And I think it was actually Mike. He's like, why don't we just have Tanner up on the roof throwing water balloons? <laughs> so I called him, but he was at the Eagles game. They were playing the Cowboys, and um, they like lost. Like uh, at the very end, they lost by two points. So we're just all standing around, and Tanner's not showing up, and we're kind of flipping out about it. And then he comes, his, his uh, fiance drops him off, like completely wasted, and he's like really belligerent, and he starts like. You know, picking a fight with the crew and stuff, and we're like, all right, we'll throw him up on the roof. We'll see what he does. I thought he was gonna like fall off and kill himself, but it was like, he, you know, at least he's here. We'll do something. And that's actually just one take, but he actually is throwing up from being drunk. <laughs> uh, well, one, we gave him one take, <laughs> and when it happens. yeah, yeah, we're all just no one could believe it. So then we had to rethink the story, and we're like, well. How could we possibly explain that? Because it was too—it was too much of a lightning in the bottle to like cut out of the film. <laughs> uh, and then he's like eating a, a lobster. Yeah. And that song that plays every time you shoot—what is that? It's um, a cheese song. Yeah, a cheese song. That's uh, from a band called Ween. Yes. Oh, you know Ween? Yeah. So do you know the story of the song? Or? Not really. They got um. They got hired to do like a commercial for Pizza Hut, and that's the song they turned in. And Pizza Hut completely rejected it. They said it wasn't edgy enough, so they redid they redid a version and said, uh, "Where'd the motherfucking cheese go?" And that was also you know passed over. So they were just sitting on the song, and the editor actually brought it had it on her iPod for some reason. And I just I was like, well, "What is you know what is this? this? We could probably afford the clearance on this, you know." <laughs> So that became the Tanner theme. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, it was really low budget, and everybody uh, slept in bunk beds in my parents' basement for like about six months. Um, which, you know, is a whole other thing in itself. <laughs> hey. Do you have any commentary on this way? Oh, um, yeah. What, uh, the actor or the character? Or? Uh, the character. Um, yeah, what do you, what do you mean? Oh, um, yeah, Swank was based on, like, my best friend from high school, his name was Swank. He was, like, a varsity athlete and valedictorian, like, both, you know, which is a cool combination. But he was, like, really shy, and he had, like, a stutter. Um, but he always, he always, like, surprised people, because he was, like, really athletic, but also, like, really smart. And, uh, I wanted, like, you know, kind of working with it somehow, so, yeah. And then the key the actor that played him, um, yeah. I mean, we auditioned a lot of people for that part, you know, because it was interesting. You had to be, I, I don't know, how do you, how do you describe some of these characters, kind of? Just, uh, just like a loyal best buddy, but yet at the same time, you can kind of walk all over him if you're not careful. You can really take advantage of a friend like that. That's kind of my interpretation of it. That's how Montag looked at it. Yeah, he just, like, wants his friends to get along, you know, and he yeah. wants to always be the nice guy, and then that's why he's constantly in between. His two best friends are always fighting, so yeah. he just has to always choose his loyalty. You know? It's like the quiet glue, that friend. Yeah, yeah, he just wants to keep the peace. Yeah. Um, well, Nikitas is actually taking care of my cat while I'm here, by the way. 